The movie begins in the year 2415, where Earth's population is reduced to 500 million due to a deadly virus that decimated 99% of humanity 400 years earlier. A scientist named Trevor created an antidote that saved humanity, but it caused a widespread infertility problem. For centuries, Trevor has searched for a cure, and to protect humanity, he established the fortified city of Bragana, where he has ruled ever since. However, resistance is rising. An underground group called the Monacons opposes Trevor's control, aiming to end his rule. Eon Flux, a Monacon operative with telepathic abilities to communicate with her leader, is assigned a mission to destroy Tre Trevor's surveillance systems. Her sister Yuna, who she rarely sees, invites her to dinner, but Eon declines. That night, she successfully sabotages Trevor's surveillance station, erasing the city's resident database. Later, she goes to visit Yuna, only to discover that she has been killed by Trevor's forces, suspecting her of Monocon involvement. Grief-stricken, Eon vows revenge against Trevor. Soon, the Monocon leader assigns her a new mission to assassinate Trevor himself. Eon's friend Sithendra joins her, equipped with cybernetic enhancements that allow her to switch hands with her feet. As they approach Trevor's headquarters, the city's security system launches a poisonous thorn attack, injuring Sithendra, but allowing Eon to press forward. Navigating using a map embedded in her body, she evades deadly traps and advances deeper into the facility. Meanwhile, in Trevor's headquarters, his brother Oren suggests wiping out all Monacans. Trevor opposes, reminding him that this isn't a solution to the city's problems. Oren, who harbors resentment, is growing desperate for power and doubts Trevor's commitment to finding a cure for the population crisis. Eon, guided by her map, realizes it has misled her into a trap. She escapes, fighting her way to Trevor, but experiences strange flashbacks that cause her to hesitate, and she's ultimately captured. In her cell, Trevor visits Eon and calls her Catherine revealing they shared a connection long ago. He provides her water laced with a drug containing a hidden message. Eon manages to escape using her ring, which triggers a small explosion, and she begins piecing together her memories. She learns from her sister's former boyfriend, now working for Trevor, that Trevor's goal has always been to cure infertility, as everyone in the city unknowingly suffers from this affliction. It's revealed that Oren orchestrated Eon's mission to kill Trevor, fearing Trevor would succeed in curing infertility and undermine his control. Worse, Eon learns that she was once Trevor's wife, Catherine, who died 400 years ago. She's one of countless clones used over the centuries in an attempt to restart human reproduction, an experiment Trevor has been forced to repeat in his efforts to save humanity. Following the message Trevor hid in the water, Eon confronts him, leading to another intense flashback. Overwhelmed by her memories, she strikes Trevor in desperation, apparently killing him. When she picks up her ring, she accidentally opens a hidden passage leading to a secret underground library. Here she discovers a belt that transports her to a high-tech laboratory, where she finds an archive of past experiments and a photograph of herself labeled Catherine. In this lab, Eon uncovers a shocking truth. She has been cloned repeatedly each clone imbued with a fraction of her original self to continue Trevor's experiments. Desperate for a solution, Trevor has cloned her over and over, hoping to rekindle her life and humanity's future. Eon is shocked by the revelations in the lab. She returns to the library, only to be ambushed by Trevor's assistant. In a fierce fight, Eon manages to overpower and kill the assistant before making her escape. Meanwhile, we learn that Trevor is still alive and orders his followers to capture Eon unharmed. Believing she's key to understanding the recent events, Oren, however, is stirring rebellion, convincing others that Trevor's collaboration with the Monacans is a betrayal and calling for Trevor's removal from power. Eon is plagued by questions about her identity and the mysterious flashbacks that haunt her. Sithendra, frustrated with Eon's hesitation, urges her to stick to the mission but Eon refuses, determined to find out the truth about Trevor and the city. Sithendra, furious, threatens to kill her, leading to a clash between the two. Eon eventually subdues Sithendra, tying her up before spotting a flying surveillance balloon hovering above the city. She risks everything, leaping and barely managing to secure herself to the balloon with a rope. Inside, she meets an elderly man who greets her as if they are familiar. 
Here, Eon discovers the shocking truth. The balloon houses a DNA archive containing the genetic material of every citizen in the city, and everyone, including herself, is merely a clone. The population has been maintained through this cloning process for generations, as natural reproduction ceased due to infertility after the virus outbreak. Eon realizes that her sister Yuna has been reborn, but only as a young child. She's heartbroken to discover that Orin had killed Yuna because she was the first in 400 years capable of conceiving naturally. Trevor had been secretly searching for a way to reverse infertility, hoping to restore natural human reproduction. Orin, however, opposed his brother's mission, preferring the power and control cloning technology afforded him. Orin's goal was to keep the population under his thumb, ensuring his own immortality through cloning. When Trevor confronts Orin, a struggle ensues, and Orin fatally wounds Trevor. Eon finds Trevor injured, and with care, removes the bullet and tends to his wounds. She knows, however, that Trevor needs Yuna's pregnancy data to complete his research. As Eon helps Trevor reach the lab to secure the data, they're determined to finish what they started. And Eon must now protect Trevor to ensure that humanity has a future. After Orin burns Trevor's documents, Eon reassures him, saying he will find a way to solve infertility. But first, they must end the oppressive cloning system. Eon wants to destroy the surveillance balloon that holds the DNA of millions. Yet Trevor hesitates, warning that its destruction would mean the end of civilization as they know it. Meanwhile, Sithendra's team has orders to kill Trevor. At a critical moment, Orin captures them both, revealing that Yuna was not the only one capable of natural conception. There were other women too, and Orin had been secretly killing these women for years to preserve his control. Sithendra, watching from afar, spots Trevor in danger. Eon telepathically contacts Sithendra, telling her the whole truth and pleading for her help. Moved by loyalty to Eon, Sithendra chooses to aid her friend and fatally shoots Orin. The battle breaks out and amidst the gunfire, Trevor is shot once more. Enraged, Orin targets Sithendra and Eon with a missile, intending to kill them both, but Eon manages to shoot Orin in a final, decisive move. Determined to end the cloning cycle, Eon boards the DNA archive balloon and begins planting explosives. The elderly man who had preserved her DNA approaches her, reminding her that he kept it so that Catherine, Eon's past self, could be reborn. Eon, however, urges him to escape, but he chooses to stay, weary of his long life and the consequences of the cloning system. As Eon escapes, she detonates the bombs, and the balloon crashes into the outer wall of the city. The citizens, long told that the outside world was a wasteland, now see the truth, the earth has healed. Nature thrives beyond the city walls, signaling the end of their confinement and the possibility of a new beginning. With cloning halted, the inhabitants now realize that this is their only life. If they perish, they won't be reborn. Eon's mission has restored humanity's freedom, offering them a future filled with genuine, irreplaceable lives.